Let's all go to the Shakespeare. Let's all go to the... Hey everybody, it's Jeffrey St. George, your favorite armchair amateur Shakespearean scholar. Uh, and today we're continuing and probably wrapping up our section on chapter four of Thinking Shakespeare by Barry Edelstein. Uh, so, a couple extra tidbits that probably didn't have their own video in mind, so let's try to bust through these. So, in the previous video, I discussed the words but and therefore, and another one to add to your list is yet. So, when you're looking at these words, circle them in your text. Barry recommends. What he supposes is that but, yet, and therefore are fundamental building blocks to the structure of your argument, right? Shakespeare's characters communicate through argument, and through seeing where those buts, yets, and therefores fall, you can then begin to parse out what the argument truly is for those more erudite sections of text that are a little hard to puzzle out. So, uh, and then you look at them with logic. If A leads to B leads to C, then C, therefore C, right? And so look for those buts, yets, and therefores, and also words that otherwise uh, uh, fulfill that need. So the next section is understanding the structure of the argument from a rhetorical sense. So uh, what are these rhetorical features that Shakespeare is using to make these elements occur? So one of the things is repetition. So keep your eye out for the same word cropping up again and again. So. Uh, in Richard's speech here, it's the word now. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious, etc., etc., etc. He keeps going now, now, now. And the important thing when you identify these repetition structures is that you must build them. So what is a build? A build can be a change in intensity, a speed, volume, any of these, or maybe all of these. What's important is that they need to change, right? A build isn't necessarily louder. A build can also just become smaller and more intense, right? So uh, do build as you're going through your argument and you can base that build off of these repetitious rhetorical features that you find. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, another thing that you can keep your eyes out for is opposites. So lover and villain. Uh, a lot of arguments are built around highlighting opposites. So when you find yourself in a situation where you do find an opposite, you have to make sure that you are uh, verbally or physically highlighting what that opposite is. And that's going to increase your audience's clarity as to exactly what you're saying, which is again, the goal of the actor. Now, there's a whole chapter later in this book on opposites, so I'm not gonna delve too deep into it here. Uh, lists are another thing that you build through, so lists of uh, uh, characteristics or objects or happenstances. Uh, Shakespeare loves his lists, and you must build through your lists as well in order to keep them interesting. Why this word now? So usually if you have a list or uh, uh, well, uh, of words that mean similar things, it's because the word wasn't quite perfect that you used the first time, but then maybe this word is perfect. No, it doesn't quite capture it. This word is perfect, right? That's how you handle these lists of uh, similar words that just stymie the actor as to why am I saying the same thing three times? It's because you're not saying the same thing three times. You are choosing this word now. It's your job to figure out why. And then, uh, speaking of now, so uh, uh, Barry ends this chapter with a reflection on the word now. So uh, not tomorrow, not before, but now. So now is a power word in Shakespeare. Barry suggests that it should always be emphasized. And so every rule is meant to be broken, but it's a good guideline. If now appears in your text, that should be just like smacking you in the head that you need to be paying attention to this and you need to emphasize what is happening now. Okay, so uh, that's it, everybody. That is chapter four. That is argument from Barry Edelstein. Uh, it can take a little bit of getting used to to wrap your head around it. It uh, is a lot of work, right? This is 
the scansion and the definitions and the understanding of the arguments, it's like 90% of the work, you guys. You have to do that work. Uh, the amount of work that you do is going to directly correlate to the quality of your performance. And I don't know about you, but I want to deliver a great performance. So I always do an absurd amount of work. And I recommend that you do too. Okay, everybody. I love you all. Please don't forget. Go Shakespeare. Go, go, go Shakespeare. Ooh, ooh.